Hello and welcome. This video talks about my December stock portfolio and all my activities since my last release video on November 6, 2017. I'm not going to disclose how many shares I currently have in each stock so please don't ask for I won't answer privately or in the comments section. For the month of December, I decided to be festive and play a Christmas track in the background. December is my favorite time of the year and I'm usually very generous around this month. Last year I gave away $3,000 to my family members at our large family gathering in Texas Houston. At the moment I'm hovering around $1 million to $2 million and I have not surpassed $2 million yet but I was very close. November was a very busy month for me. I bought a lot of different stocks, starting with Hemco. I wish I bought the stock when it was under a dollar but I got greedy waiting for a big drop and it never happened. Instead it took off like a rocket and I got emotional and bought at an extremely high price of $3.09 per share. Then I bought it again at $2.50 which was another bad investment but if I hold on to the stock long term I don't think it'll matter because I think it'll go up eventually. Then it dropped to $2 and I bought some more. The more the stock drops the more I will buy. I have a video in the works for Hemco but I don't know when the release date will be. Aurora Cannabis is next in line as I made a huge mistake regarding this company's stock. I wish I could travel back in time and undo what I did but no one is perfect. On November 6, 2017, AMD and Intel released some news regarding a partnership between AMD and Intel. I got a little too excited and I sold a big chunk of my Aurora shares at $350 to buy AMD stock at $1170, which was a huge mistake because AMD never panned out and Aurora took off like a rocket. Then I sold out again at $4 to buy Plug Power, which I'm not very happy about those decisions. I believe these stocks will have a dramatic increase in price around the qu quarterly conference in January. I really hope Aurora drops back down to $350 to $4 range so I can buy it back in. But I truly believe the new trading range is going to be between $5 to $8 until there's some kind of breaking news that propels the stock to $10 and beyond, surpassing canopy growth. Aurora Cannabis is an exciting company right now. Aurora's management is actively working on getting more mergers and acquisitions so the company can grow and expand even more in the future. I am eagerly awaiting the day legalization arrives in Canada and I hope Aurora keeps releasing exciting news along the way. On September 28, 2017, Aurora and Namaste Technologies Incorporated announced that an agreement has been struck between the two companies. On November 7, 2017, they started selling Namaste's products through Aurora's website and mobile apps. Aurora is now offering a range of high quality vaporizers to its medical patients. Under this agreement, this is a significant milestone for Namaste as it has partnered itself with one of the industry's leading licensed producers. In turn, through the collaboration, Aurora is broadening its product offering. With over 200 orders over the first three days since the offering going live, sales have been impressive. When I read this piece of news, I bought some Namaste stock at 22 cents. I bought this as a gamble. I thought I could double my money in the short term and when the stock rose to 46 cents, I sold half my shares. This was another mistake because the stock went all the way past a dollar a share. On November 27th, 2017, Aurora and Namaste Technologies announced that Aurora's wholly owned subsidiary, BC Northern Lights and Namaste Technologies have signed a hardware supply agreement whereby Namaste will be the first third-party distributor to sell BC Northern Lights premium home cultivation systems and accessories through its online systems. Namaste will roll out same-day delivery service of select BC Northern Lights products to the Greater Toronto Area as well as next-day delivery in most other parts of Canada to help meet the growth in demand for home gardening systems. With this news, I decided to hold on to Namaste stocks for the long term at this point and will buy more if it dropped below 40 cents. On November 2nd, 2017, Canopy Grove Corporation has completed the previously announced transaction that saw Constellation Brands strategically invest $245 million Canadian dollars in Canopy Grove in exchange for 9.9% .9 equity in the company following completion of the investment. As a result, the company has today issued 18,876,901 common shares in the company to an affiliate constellation in exchange for Canadian $244,990,084.25. When I heard this news, I woke up early on a Monday to a decent amount of shares at $14.11, then I bought more at $16.07. I sold half my position around 1950 to buy Hemco stock. Plug 
I'm still holding on to shares. Hopefully it takes off soon so I can swing trade it. Unless they release breaking news that makes me want to hold on to it for a long term. Amazon is a big investor in the company. My prediction is that Amazon wants plug power to recover so they're giving them a helping hand to improve their margins and technology so Amazon can really benefit when the company grows. Only time will tell if my theory pans out. As for Dynasert, I have sold most of my shares around 45 cents. This company has to be my worst investment I've ever made. A lot, a lot of money and time with this company. My gut instinct told me this company was too good to be true. So I traveled to Toronto to investigate the company. I lost somewhere in the range of 50 to 100,000 to this company, but I recovered it by investing in Radiant Technologies. I bought at 57 cents and I sold some at 75 cents, but I still have a decent amount left and probably my second biggest investment in my portfolio. Regarding TerraTech Corp, I still own shares of the company and decided that I will hold on to it for long term, waiting for the next large rise in stock prices, which I predict will happen on January 1st, 2018, when the state of California is required to open applications for licenses so businesses can begin legally selling recreational Mary Jane. California has a huge population which is north of 39 million. Canada's population is only 36 million, which makes California's population 3 million more than Canada. I am thinking of purchasing more stock. For Radiant Technologies, I plan to hold on to this long term. I don't think the stock will ever drop back down below a dollar unless something really bad happens to the company. Just a reminder, but on September 20th, 2017, Radiant Technology announced that they have successfully completed their project to extract nicotine from tobacco on an industrial scale. The result of over four years of research and development with a leading tobacco manufacturer. The project's goal was to remove nicotine from tobacco biomass while minimizing the impact on appearance, smell, and taste of the nicotine-depleted tobacco. Results of the project included nicotine depletion over 95% across multiple cured tobacco types, nicotine depletion without altering the physical appearance of the tobacco, limited removal of compounds linked to flavor verified by taste panel evaluation. I believe eventually Radiant Technologies could effectively become a billion dollar company when legalization starts and with Aurora, Hemco and a big tobacco company as their partner, Radiant Technologies could generate very high profit and a stable revenue stream. On November 29, 2017, I saw a video on Emerald Health licensed producer of Mary Jane starting a joint venture with Village Farms, a tomato greenhouse company, to convert 1 million square feet out of a total potential 5 million square feet of operating greenhouse to grow Emerald Health's product. I was looking at their stock and it had a massive drop so I bought their shares at $2.51. Not sure how joint ventures work but I'm assuming Emerald Health receives half the revenue and profit from the greenhouse which should range from $150 to $400 million of revenue per year. And once they have all 5 million square feet they could potentially make over $2 billion per year assuming they manage to sell all their product. On to my last stock Lithium X. They trade under the stock symbol LIX. This company mines and processes the mineral they mine into lithium. I'm gambling on the fact that the future will be full of electric cars because electric cars requires a lot of lithium for their batteries. I'm hoping that Tesla becomes a giant like Ford when it comes to producing cars. The stock is kind of boring at the moment but I believe it will have a rise like Aurora in 2018. Thanks for sticking around this long. I have saved the best bit of exciting news to end things off with. I saw an article on the internet about a potential merger of Aurora Cannabis with Afira. I don't believe this will happen due to the fact that Afira has US investment and Aurora does not want to be delisted from the Toronto Stock Exchange. The Green Organic Dutchman, which is the second licensed producer in Quebec, announced that it has secured a 75 acre property located in Salaberry de Valley Field, Quebec. The company intends to develop the Quebec property in multiple phases with the first of construction expected to start sometime in the fall of 2017. The Quebec property has the potential to host over 820,000 square feet of highly automated state-of-the-art hybrid greenhouse facilities. The Quebec property build-out will increase the Green Organic Dutchman annual productive cap capacity to 116,000 kilograms. By acquiring the Green Organic Dutchman, 
Aurora would bring Aurora's production to over 250,000 kilograms annually by mid-2019. The Green Organic Dutchman has a 150,000 square feet production facility underway that is fully funded and almost complete, bringing the production to 14,000 kilograms. Since the Green Organic Dutchman and Aurora are the only licensed producers in Quebec, this would give Aurora a monopoly in Quebec. Since the Green Organic Dutchman is also not a publicly traded company yet, Aurora could get a really good deal. Some viewers may not be aware, but on November 23, 2017, Aurora announced that the company has signed a definitive agreement for the acquisition of 100% of the issued and outstanding shares of Larson Limited. And at the moment, Larson is helping with the Green Organic Dutchman's 820,000 square foot carbon copy clone of Aurora Sky facility, so there's a chance this prediction could become a reality. Let's hope Aurora manages to obtain Canamed so that Aurora can rise to the number one producer in Canada. Right now, if you are not aware, Canamed's management is being very hostile towards Aurora's deal and adopted a poison pill to prevent Aurora's hostile takeover. But Aurora's management team is confident they will be, still be able to obtain the company because they see a lot of shareholder support from Canamed's shareholders. If you would like me to cover the Canamed's poison pill tactics to discourage the hostile takeover, please let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe for future content. If you dislike this video, please give me a thumbs down. I'm always trying to find ways to improve my videos. Have happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year's.